All right, and then October 1st, Logan Schwartz was named one of 144 scholar athletes nominated for the Great American Rivalry, Rivalry Series Hall of Fame team. Um, the 25 member scholar athlete Hall of Fame team will be determined through a 30 day voting period, 10 19 through 12 14, which doesn't sound like 30 days, but it, it works. All right. Um, the October 3rd, first boys modified soccer game was streamed live through our partnership with Local Live. Um, the 7th was first student senate meeting and other virtual clubs began uh, on this day. Student senate meeting went really well, there was a lot of turn up. Um, a lot of kids are starting to get involved this year, which is nice. I noticed a lot of the new freshmen were getting involved too. Um, 14th of October was the PSAT, um, and I wouldn't know how that went because I didn't take it this year. Um, October 14th also was the Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy. That went really well. Um, we got food, free food, free Chick-fil-A. It was pretty good. Um, a lot of the kids were really involved. It was very nice. We got to meet everybody in our group. It, it, was, it was really good, and our next meeting will be, I think, in November. Um, the 21st of October was the DMS and DHS PTO meeting number two. Also wouldn't know how that went, but, you know. And then the 26th through the 30th is going to be Red Ribbon Week, SAG Club. We made um, slides for all the different days and everything that's going on. The dress-up days, Halloween is going to be a day. Um, super cool, super involved. It's like the first opportunity for kids to start dressing up during school. Um, October 30th is the Donate Life Blood Drive um, by appointment only. And then November, these dates are wrong, but it is the uh, no, 16th through 20th. We're planning on Student Senate is having a fall fun week. So there's going to be dress up days. There's going to be a thankfulness sort of situation for all the kids um, to get more involved as well, kind of like the Red Ribbon Week. Um, yeah, and then November 13th is the end of the first marking period. November 18th is the DMS DHS PTO meeting number three. And then November 18th is Academy of Finance and Junior Achievement Stock Market Challenge. And that will be virtual. And that's all I have. So that's, yeah, that's how it's going. It's going pretty well. All right. Hello. 
I would like to introduce Anthony Urbino. Anthony has been waiting since March to do his building <laughs> update, so he's very excited Sorry. to be here today.
We've been purchasing and using local produce from for our med patients. Sorry, I just have to breathe a minute here. <laughs> Again, this school year, um, with which we set up um, partnerships with some of our local farmers. Um, we talked to Bippers Farms again, and they planted a uh, late crop of corn. We've had corn on the cob through all of September and now right through the end of October. And I did hear we may still have some for November. And it's great. I mean, it's super sweet, tastes great. So that, that's a plus for us. And it's right in our backyard. Um, we also menu watermelon for our farmers, yellow watermelon, cabbage, cucumbers, tomatoes, fresh basil, lettuce. Onions, celery, potatoes, different squashes. We just got some squash in the other day. It's called mashed potato squash. So we're going to try it. It's white. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, Brussels sprouts, spinach, onions, celery, potatoes, um, pears, peaches, nectarines, and plums. We also purchase our apples from the Nokin Farms, which is a local farm. And we're doing an apple of the week program. So we, uh, well, I'll show you a picture down the road. We put out the apple of the week. Uh, we try to purchase as much as we can local, local before the season runs out. And the kids take this very well. Um, some of the fruit cups that we're making are just flying out of the kitchen, especially here at the high school. Like, you'd be really surprised how much they ask us for. Uh, part of this year's new state legislation, or last year's new state legislation, was to use 30% of our food budget on New York grown to produce items. We are also featuring a New York Thursdays menu once a month. The entire lunch that day is New York State produced items. With this, already, with this and all the already used New York State items, we did achieve the 30% quota, um, which means we are getting 19 cents more on lunch meal because we achieved that. We should be really proud because only seven districts Okay, now I'll tell you your lunch bags. It's in your lunch bags. Um, I just want to give you a sample of some of the things the kids are getting this year. Um, in there, you'll see on top is a um, apples, fresh apples. Our cooks cut them up and they put some like, sugar and cinnamon on them so they're fresh baked apples. So the kids are getting that. They're also getting, um, this year we got from the government blueberries. They are outstanding. They're into quick, they often frizzly quick frozen. And we just cut them off and the kids love them. And then I also gave you a strawberry fruit cup that we can get in from the strawberry fruit cup. Also in the bag is, we hand out informational things to the kids all the time as giveaways when they come through for the lunches. So I gave you some samples of what we can give the kids. We do have age appropriate ones too for the elementary. Equipment, equipment update. Uh, we are currently replacing our combi ovens in the middle school and high schools. It's an oven that steams and also cooks. Um, they are over 30 years old. We can't repair them anymore. So now we're just going to replace them with steamers. So we're reinvesting the department. Future department needs walk in cooler and freezer replacement at the high school, possibly next capital project. Walk in cooler floors, replacing the middle school in Cayuga. Next to replace will be a steamer at Cayuga Heights, which we will get rid of their combi oven, which is still working, working our fingers crossed for this year. And I'm planning to put it in the budget for next year. Just so you can see on the pictures here, there's the apple of the week. Um, your cider is from Mayor Brother Farms, right in our backyard again. We just got the cider through their slushy machine. There's New York Thursday, this, this past Thursday, they got the hot dogs, which were sourced in New York State. Uh, potatoes, um, coleslaw, milk, apple, and the Welch's slushies, all New York State products. The Q's voice is always being heard with me. I continue to lobby um, in Albany, Washington for our children and our program uh, for the Erie County, New York State, and the School Nutrition Association. I'm currently the treasurer of the Erie County School Nutrition Association and the chair of the Federal Public Policy Committee. I have to mention Lunch Hero Day every year, every year because it's so heartfelt. 
Once again, it was a huge success. We're always touched by the outpouring of gratitude from our students, faculty, and staff. The food service staff is thrilled with the involvement of the entire district. And this year was really special because it's happening right in the middle of COVID in our academic. So um, it was May 1st. The girls were working their tails off, also with helpers. We didn't do it all by ourselves, but they were working their tails off. So they were just so touched at the outpouring. We received so much positive PR for this event, Channel 2, Channel 4, Channel 7, and the B. We were featured in New York State's um, magazine for food service, it's called Focus, and in the National Food Service magazine, uh, which is called School Nutrition. Uh, many pictures of, of this wonderful recognition, and we truly are all about promoting our program. So it really meant a lot to see after that. One of the signs we hung on all the buses and come around the building it says no need for a cake when you have an apron. Here's some of our girls. And some of the girls on the bus, they just want to point out, were wearing capes that day. So it was really cute. Really cute. Um, here's Dr. Ravy in the top corner handing out some thank you cards and recognition. Myself and somebody, and then someone sent me a snapshot of me on TV. <laughs> so I was stuck in it. Now these pictures I'm showing you were not pictures that were already on the website. Just so you know, these are the pictures I have. Here's some pictures we have. I, can, I would be remiss not to thank the whole DePue district for all the help I had. People came in, they're helping us prepare food, they're helping us pass out food. The bus, buses, bus garage, bus drivers, I see everybody. I, I can't even say enough. And a lot of you were here too, so thank you for that. Uh, here's some more bus delivery, one of the food. You can see some of the people, our three amigos in the middle there. And this is Thompson and um, I think it's Jay William, Dr. Ravy in the middle. And then I have to say a couple parents sent me pictures. The two little boys on, this, on the side being signed thanking us for everything we did. People would drop off little thank yous for the girls, which was wonderful. And then I have two pictures of this family. The mom said she got so many bagels. They started to pile up, so she put chef's things on the kids because they were in the house anyways, and they made little pizzas on their bagels, so she wanted me to see what they did. Um, thank you to the students, their families, the faculty, staff, board of education, and administrators for allowing us to serve you every day. I truly feel a part of the whole team and family here. Do any of you have any questions? I was just wondering, is it possible to do like is it a global connect? I call it a robo call, but a global connect about the extension of the free breakfast and lunch. We we have, and we're actually we have a meeting tomorrow to talk about uh, some some additional uh, messaging. Okay, especially for Wednesday. Yeah. I guess I, I think you know you hear free lunch, free breakfast. You know the parents don't have to do anything; the kids just get it when they come here. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't have to sign anything; they just. Get it. Right. And it's totally free. So it is for all the students. So right. we're not it's not singling out just kids with free education. Whoever goes through the line. Right. Now so we do this for applications because we need to have them on file for our next school year and for some of our other funding. We need to get the numbers from those applications at uh, poverty levels. So I'm struggling to get those back from people, but I'm sending another letter out tomorrow telling them please send those in. But no, everybody will get it tomorrow. Yes. Um, I'm gonna speak for my kids. My kids enjoy getting lunch during during the normal school year. Well, this year too. How is it? I'm asking more from a personal aspect. Is how does it work for kids um, when they're on their virtual days? Can they still come and get yep. lunch? Yes. Okay. What's the exact procedure? Because I know my household's a little confused on it, and that's probably partly our fault. But, um, like, is it my household's fault? Just being confused on it. So, what is the exact procedure? Happy to answer. Yep. Yep. yep please. Um, every day. The kids are in school, have access. Yeah. And every day, anybody who's remote or on their hybrid day mm -hmm. can come to the back door in Cayuga Heights and pick up their meals between 11 and 1. My kids will be very happy for Wild Mike's Pizza Day. Pardon? I said my kids will be very happy for Wild Mike's Pizza Day then. Yeah, it's on the menu. <laughs> I, and, I put, and I put the menu out on the website so you can see what days and what we're serving. Again, we're meeting tomorrow. Uh, Dr. Ravy and Serena and I are meeting tomorrow to 
maybe come up with some more ideas of how to get more participation. So that may change a little bit, but as of right now, that's that's the procedure. Every single day out the door, and, and it's a hot meal. Um, is being served out the, out the side back door by the roof. Yeah, they didn't look out with the menu on the stuff they like on the on the days they're in school. Oh. <laughs> they're very happy. Anybody else? Okay, well enjoy enjoy tasting yourself. I put spoons in there and stuff so you can try it out. So at least you can see some of the things the kids are doing. Okay, thank, thank you for having me. Thank you. To our first public forum. This is the time in the board meeting agenda when district residents may address the Board of Education with their concerns. Each resident has up to three minutes to address the board. A total of 15 minutes will be allowed for each public forum. I think we'll start. Dr. Ramey has a question from a Yeah, so I, we received a, a, an email uh, question with regard to our reopening plan. With other school districts in the area assessing current attendance plans and discussing changes in attendance plans, is the Pew currently reviewing and assessing the possibility that the student body, specifically those of elementary school age, could be moved to a full-time in-person model? If so, what is the current status of those discussions? If not, is there a date in which the district will be reassessing current attendance plans and discussing modification of those plans? The problem is um, we have to follow the Department of Health guidelines and right now, the Department of Health guidelines stipulate two key things. One is that we have to maintain social distancing, you know, six feet between students, and students have to wear a mask. So our capacity in our buildings really is our barrier for bringing all students back 100% of the time face-to-face. -face. Other districts are in different situations. Other districts have excess space um, and or uh, excess staff that they can utilize in order to create those extra uh, uh, sections uh, for students. So until that uh, changes for us, the Department of Health guidelines, um, that, that becomes the barrier for us not being able to do face-to-face. -face. Right now, our capacity for most classrooms is about 12, I think, Michelle, 12 students per classroom. Some classrooms here in the high school, being an older building, can only hold 10 students at a time. So trying to keep that six foot of distance uh, between students um, all the time is, is a barrier at this point. Um, hopefully, if things continue to go well and we get into the spring, perhaps the Department of Health will consider uh, adjusting those guidelines. But that's where we're at right now. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Yes, do you have any other questions? I do not. No other questions? Anybody here have any questions? Have another public forum in a little bit. Consent agenda. May I have a motion of the Board of Education for the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. We're just new business now. Do you have questions? No, no, no. 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 Now we're just pointing out. Who made the good. motion to second it? Oh, okay. We're good. Carry on. <laughs> I thought I was missing something. We have a motion of the Board of Education by the recommendation of the superintendent. Be it resolved that the board accepts the donation from Womansville United Methodist Church in the amount of $250 for the purpose of students' needs related to apparel and personal care items. I'll we'll move. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. So the second public forum. Again, this is the time of the board meeting agenda with district residents may adjust the Board of Education with their concerns. Each resident has up to three minutes to adjust the board. A total of 15 minutes will be allowed for each public forum. Okay, Jessica. No, I just refreshed the browser to make sure. No? Okay. Thank you. Uh, comments and remarks by board members. Uh, Mr. I just want to I want to say as a, uh, a parent that I have been very pleased so far of how the remote's going. It's absolutely not perfect, but it's very good. Um, uh, I, I've had the fortune uh, to work with Mrs. Fortune uh, and Mrs. Cole, and uh, they've worked real hard. Um, they bring energy to their online presentations, and I think it, it's worked.
working as well as I, I could ever ask. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I've had interactions with people that go to other places and I've heard what it could be and it makes me happier what we're dealing with and the planning that went into it. So again, everybody's doing a magnificent job and let's keep it up, keep making it better. And um, Jeff, I guess I would ask you, can you clarify one thing, because I know people have been inquiring, or you had brought it up, uh, I believe, in the email. Just what exactly is happening with the sports schedule for people, because I know that's an interest thing for a lot of people. For fall sports right now? Fall sports, then winter, right after that. Kind of, Your guess is kind of, <laughs> What the plan, yeah. theoretically. So, right now, fall sports are uh, uh, low and medium risk level sports are um, uh, in action, if you will. Soccer being the higher risk sport of the sports that are offered right now. Uh, we have a, our full schedule uh, um, playing uh, across the section. Uh, we've had a couple glitches here and there, just like with different schools reopening. Um, but we have a full complement uh, of uh, boys and girls soccer, cross country, golf just finished up ECICs uh, yesterday, I believe. Uh, the weather wasn't great, but we finished it up. Um, cross, I don't know if I mentioned cross country. And then, swimming so uh, we've been maintaining our schedules uh, we've been very cautious coaches have been phenomenal uh, the high risk sport of football is allowed to training condition and we just started that last week um, uh, their, their season right now is on schedule to start March 1st and our it's called fall two um, where volleyball and football will be able to be played Winter is, we're still awaiting from direction from the state. Um, the governor's office mentioned late last week that we would be hearing within the next uh, two weeks if um, winter sports would be able to take place. Now, the issue is um, with winter sports, not just the risk factor in um, students being, student athletes being near one another, but it's also indoors. Um, so that, that's, that's a, a key factor at this point. I think with all the winter sports going on, again, this is just my opinion um, as the superintendent's rep of Section 6. I think basketball could happen, but there would be no spectators. Uh, we're in a good position with that because we, we have uh, local live cameras on um, our, our playing uh, sites, which includes our gym. And um, we would be able to, a lot of you know, parents would be able to watch their kids uh, through local live just like you can all the soccer. Um, but, won't know that, and that that could start uh, November 30th if we get the green light uh, from from the state, and then fall two will start March 1st, and then we have our spring sports scheduled to be. Um, there's a question mark where it'll be sometime in April. And well, okay. kids can play well, multiple. One after the other, after right? The other. And okay. Kids can play multiple sports. Um, we have uh, some instances where um, boys are playing uh, soccer. Uh, and then conditioning for football because they're still football players. But it's great for them to give them the opportunity to play a sport that they might not have had, you know, an opportunity to play before. So, um, you know, we're excited. We're thrilled to death. We're trying to keep it going, uh, trying to maintain those um, health guidelines uh, for for all the student athletes so they can continue to keep playing. Uh, we've only had one team so far in the section that had to cancel some games due to a, a positive outbreak. Um, Male soccer team, um, but that, that's the only one so far. Good question. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to commend or give a compliment to all the administrators in our three schools that for Spirit Week, I know it wasn't what we're used to, but at least the kids got something. I know my kids enjoyed what we were able to do this year. So thank you very much. You guys are all doing a great job with what we have to work with. One thing, uh, you're kind of legislative. Uh, you, uh, did, does everybody get those emails from the old mail about the letter campaign? Does everybody get them? Yes. I get a lot of them. So. From Joe? From everybody. Okay. Um, they're really pushing to the, the, get that letter campaign. 
And so at least if we could, at least as board members, and basically a formatted letter there, just um, send it in yourself, just so that there's some, shows that there's some representation to our, from our board. Um, I was unable to go to the last Thursday's meeting because my root beer showed up 20 minutes before I <laughs> left, so I couldn't leave my house, so I don't know what happened this past Thursday. Um, you all did get your little, well, your orange surprises in front of your houses last, last week, or first week of the month. It is school board recognition week, so just play your sense proudly. And that's all I got. Anybody else? No? Okay, our next meeting is uh, November 17th, 2020. I have a motion to adjourn, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you for coming.